Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Great Malabite morning. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning. morning. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning. Good morning, Tundu. We start the review with these day newspapers, Nigeria's newspaper of records. The lead story, Irabo talks tough, orders troops to smoke out unrepentant bandits. 25 terrorists eliminated in Boronu. Yes, the chief of defense staff led the, chief, the other service chiefs to the Operation Harandi Daji uh, headquarters in Zamfara State. And again, he gave the marching order to the soldiers on ground to do the needful, smoke out these unrepentant bandits. Any bandit who is repentant will not be in the bush. He will come out and live with the people. So I think it's a timely directive. And we have seen um, the new service chiefs actually going to the men on ground to give them not only the pep talk, but I hope they are also properly empowered with the right ammunition to flush out not only bandits, but also the insurgents who are in the Northeast. And from the reports, 25 terrorists were eliminated in Boronu. And since these services took over, there's been a surge in the battle to the den of these insurgents and bandits. We hope before long, We'll see the results of this. Well, Emmanuel Ufene, yes. let's take a short commercial break and then we'll come back to you and the newspaper review will continue. <music> Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Ufene is still with us reviewing top stories in today's newspapers from around the world. Back to you, Emmanuel Ufene. Yes, we were just r running through the charge by the chief of the defense staff to its men on ground to flush out bandits and insurgents. But if we look at the Tribune newspaper, the security agencies have their work well cut out for them. Let's start with the security story on the front page of the Tribune. Above the masthead, bandits kill 937 kidnapped 1,972 in Kaduna in 2020 report. Kaduna Central regards records highest death toll. Security challenges cut across ethno-religious divides government. Yes, that report was given by the Kaduna State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Awuna, the magnitude of the problem on ground. So many persons, 937 killed in Kaduna alone. Then if you look below, tanker drivers block Bini or expressway over killing of two members. Yes, yesterday, travelers uh, on the Benin Shagamu Express, we had a torrid time because drivers, bus drivers had to block the road. Three of their members were killed by armed robbers. And the problem was that the armed robbery incident took place a shouting distance from army checkpoint. That was what infuriated the uh, bus drivers to embark on that protest yesterday. So a lot to be done about insecurity across the country. But the lead story of the Nigerian Tribune, we cannot miss that, the Nigerian Tribune, Reps want disbursement of Ibori's 4.2 million pounds loot halted. The Nigerian Tribune, please. Members want it returned to Delta State. Funds looted by Darye Alamesia were returned to Plateau. Bayelsa Falana says. IYC, that's Ijo Youth Council, tackled federal government, says position unacceptable on severe. Now, the House of Representatives, thanks to the legislators from Delta State in the House of Representatives, they raised that motion yesterday. It was 
debated in the House, and the conclusion was that that money should go to Delta State, the rightful owners of the fund, confiscated by the British government, the British authorities from former Governor James Ibori and his associates. Now, the revelation there is that the money is not just 4.2 million, but 6.2 million pounds. And we want full disclosure so that Delta State is not changed at the end of the day. Yes, it's our money, and that money should go back to Delta State. Now, the Vanguard newspaper, still on insecurity, bandits abduct 1,000 miners killed 10 in Zafara, Zamfara, according to the Emirs. Deploy more security men to areas affected by headsmen attacks, banditry, Senate tells National Security Advisor. Take fight to Boko Haram enclaves, reps tell military chiefs. Army has achieved commendable success against terrorism, banditry, others, according to the chief of army staff. Sokoto bans self-acclaimed security volunteers. Then beneath that story, insecurity, Yoruba group warns Ogun, Ondo, or your governors against terror attacks in schools. Now, the Daily Independent newspaper, labor threatens to shut down threatens shutdown of economy, protest bill seeking to move minimum wage to concurrent lists. Lobby your representative to kill the bill, Dagua. Bajabi Amila to meet labor leaders. Tuesday, labor protests won't stop National Assembly, PGF, that's the Progressive Governors Forum, Director General. Now, the Guardian newspaper also has the same story. Labor threatens to shut down economy over minimum wage. Now, the Nation newspaper, Senate House, will kill the bill on wage negotiation. Protesting workers have nothing to fear. NLC declares nine governors anti-workers. While the Punch newspaper, wage bill protests, National Assembly, Labor meets Tuesday. Now, the News Direct, Nigeria News Direct newspaper, EFCC uncovers 70 billion Naira oil subsidy fraud as Bauer testifies against Nadaba Energy in 1.4 billion Naira subsidy fraud. Now, the Daily Sun newspaper, UK stops recruitment of Nigerian doctors, nurses, 46 other countries also. Now, over 5,000 Nigerian doctors and nurses are currently working in the UK. But for those hoping to join that army of nurses and doctors in the UK from Nigeria, there is a halt from the UK government for now. And if you read the daily independent, no, the independent newspaper of UK, perhaps you see the reason. NHS recruits thousands of overseas nurses Fear that push for staff from around the globe is, uh, is ethically dubious. More than 8,000 overseas nurses were recruited in the last 10 months by the UK uh, authorities, the NHS, to help in the first, since the first wave of the pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic, when staff were overstretched in critical care areas. But according to uh, the British Association of Critical uh, Care Nurses, um, it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul, which the body considers as unethical to be recruiting nurses from poorer countries to service uh, wealthy countries. But you won't blame the nurses because many of them are going there for better pay. But the World Health Organization has also warned that the world is short of 6 million nurses. So a lot of uh, uh, nurses will be in high demand around the world, obviously. Now, the Wall Street Journal, quickly, Congress passes virus relief bill. President Biden's 1.9 billion package 
with a raft of anti-poverty measures is to be signed on Friday. Yes, this is the first major legislative achievement of President Biden. Of course, it was done strictly on party lines. No Republican senator or, or House of Rep member voted for that bill. It's something President Biden will have to chew on while he savours the success of this bill, which he will sign into law on Friday after addressing the American nation tonight. Ruben Rufai and the lovely Tundu. While you'll recall during the campaign, one of his strengths was said to be his ability to work across the aisle. He's going to have to prove that at this point. And I'm quickly on Delta State. I mean, I'm surprised that uh, uh, we don't know exactly how much uh, has been sent back by the UK. But you recall that at that uh, uh, ceremony where that figure was announced, uh, Katrina Lang, the High Commissioner of the UK to Nigeria, made it clear that the 4.2 uh, pounds, million pounds that has been uh, given back uh, is uh, the first tranche. So is uh, the Delta State government talking about the next tranche? If they want uh, further details about you know, what exactly the UK is likely to repatriate, I think that they should engage uh, the federal government to get uh, necessary information. But full disclosure. Nobody, one nobody, full disclosure. Yes, I know, as a stakeholder. Yes. You know, uh, and nobody should be surprised that Honorable Ndidi Lumelu, who is from Delta State, brought up the matter on the floor of the House of Reps. And the House of Reps is now saying uh, there should be no uh, uh, disbursement of that fund. But remember that the case, the difference between Bayesa and uh, Plateau and Delta State is that Bayesa and uh, Plato did not say that no money was missing. At the point, Delta said no money was missing. You want me to tell you the similarity? The similarity is that this money was taken from Delta State coffers. Whatever somebody said, not Delta State.